So I'm going to uh, give a talk about the study that was done with Arsene <coughs> Balapé, and he's a doctor and also a professor in the University of uh, East of Antipolis. And uh, Arno is a computer scientist. And I think this, it, it has been a great opportunity for him to, to see the, how many areas there are involved in the business. At least uh, that's what he told me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you how to estimate the passenger traffic in the building using constraint-based estimates of elevator origin destination matrices. And you can use this information, for example, to make forecasts about future passengers and to improve elevator control. So we're going to first look at some backgrounds, and then the <coughs> estimation problem formulation, and then some search algorithms and numerical experiments, and then compute the study. Okay, as you all know, elevator control uh, dispatches <coughs> elevators to passengers' calls, and typically by optimizing uh, or minimizing waiting time, journey time, or both, or energy. Uh, however, the future passengers may make these uh, dispatching decisions non-optimal, and this requires the changing of previously defined rules. For example, in conventional control, you might reallocate and change the uh, dispatching decision. However, forecast about the future passengers help to avoid bad decisions, and they should, based, should be based on the uh, complete information about the passenger traffic. This is based on passenger journeys, and with the passenger journey, I mean the journey of one passenger from an origin port to a destination port at a certain time of day. But that's the most detailed information you can get from passengers. <coughs> uh, okay, in this figure, we have an 84 building, and these arcs could represent, for example, the passenger journeys of a 15 or 5 minute periods in a building. And uh, I call the number of passenger journeys from an origin port to a destination for the origin destination passenger count. And for example, here, sorry. <coughs> Yeah. Here, the origin destination passenger count from 4.1 to 4.4 could be 2 in this case, or something in this 5 minutes period. So what we would like to do is to measure the passenger journeys to get this uh, uh, important information, but the problem is that uh, you can't measure it directly based on the available measurements that you have in the system. <coughs> now I'm going to show you what is an elevator trip, which is uh, essential for the estimation of the passenger journeys. Uh, I start with an animation, it might look a bit silly, but it's, it's going to clarify. So on the first floor we have two passengers arriving and they give an up call. Then uh, two, <coughs> more, two more passengers arrive and they don't give the call because it was already given. Okay, it's a conventional system. Then on the third floor you have uh, three passengers arriving and they give an up call. Then the four passengers on the first floor enter the elevator and give car calls to floors four and six. Okay, then the elevator goes to serve, <coughs> up call, passengers enter, and the elevator continues to serve the calls on the upper floors. On the fourth floor, two passengers exit the elevator. On the sixth, three. On the eighth floor, two passengers exit. Okay, and the, on the eighth floor, the uh, elevator becomes empty, and the elevator trip ends because any other passengers later this will not be related to, to these passengers in any way. So basically we can define an elevator trip as successive stops in one direction of travel with passengers inside the elevator. Okay, let's see again what happened. So on the first floor, four passengers uh, boarded the elevator, and they give the calls to both <coughs> four and six, and these arcs represent the possible routes of these passengers based on the calls. Then on the third floor, three prior passengers uh, boarded the elevator. They give a new call to floor eight, so there's this new arc. But then we have to add also these arcs from floor three to floor four and six, because it's of course possible uh, that these passengers travel to these destinations. We don't know, but it's possible. In destination one, for these two arcs from floor four, uh, three to four and six would exist only if they were given from the DOP. Okay. So destination control basically just makes the problem a little bit easier. But you can't use destination calls to estimate passengers because calls do not correspond to the number of passengers. 
Uh, then on the fourth floor there was two passengers who alighted the elevator, on the sixth floor three, and on the eighth floor two. So these elevator trips <coughs> occur continuously in a building, right? Successively, and we would like to estimate the origin destination matrix each of these trips. But uh, that's, not, that's not an easy task, as for example, as in this problem, there's no unique way of defining or dividing the passengers from the origins between the destinations. There's no unique solution for this problem. So we can do this by estimation, by solving the elevator trip origin destination matrix estimation problem. And to do this, we model the, uh, this elevator trip as a direct network of nodes <coughs> and arcs defined by the origin destination pairs. And here the capital X I J denotes the passenger bound from origin I to destination J. That's what we want to estimate for all origin destination pairs. The trip. Uh, B uh, B I and A A I denote the measured boarding and lighting count at the given node. And uh, this elevator trip is similar to a single transit route, for example, a bus line. And there exist several methods. It's a well well studied subject uh, for estimating origin destination matrix for such routes, but there's a we cannot kind of directly use those methods, uh, methods and the main, main difference is that uh, we have to estimate an origin destination matrix uh, for each elevator trip separately, whereas for single transit routes, such as bus line, they typically collect, make uh, observations during long periods of, period of time and make the estimation based on that data. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Problem formulation is based on, in this case, some constraint. It's a constraint problem formulation and on, on an objective function. And I'm not going to go through these all, but this um, one important one again, is this uh, <coughs> flow conservation constraint. We have to assume that, or we assume here that people don't disappear and multi or mu multiply during the trip. Another one interesting related to passenger behavior is this that if a de delivery request is given from an origin I to destination J, then we have to assign at least one passenger to that origin destination pair. Of course, people may give false calls, but that's something we can't uh, take into account without additional, additional uh, measuring devices. Okay, then the objective is to minimize the least cross deviation between the predicted and the object boarding and lighting counts. Okay. To solve the problem, we study the five different algorithms. They're based on constraint programming and branch and bound, that first search process. And uh, in this uh, branch and bound method, you have you use uh, or you can define a branching heuristic, which means that each node the search tree, you select the variable that you're going to study next and its next value. And uh, in these three deterministic algorithms that we study. We just had a uh, deterministic uh, heuristic, so for variable and value selection. Then we studied also one algorithm with deterministic variable selection and uh, random value selection. And then we studied also one completely randomized algorithm. And these implementations are based on Joko, which is an open source Java library. And if you're interested in this more, you can contact Arno. So, to study the approach and these uh, algorithms, the performance, we made some, uh, generated some test data with the building traffic simulator. And this <coughs> data was used to construct a true building origin destination matrix for each simulation. And, uh, okay, here's an example. And each element in this matrix corresponds to the true number of passengers from an origin port to a destination port. And the nice thing about, of course, this is that, okay, we have the traditional traffic components there. Uh, we can define <coughs> inter-entrance traffic or, as we have already seen, we can uh, make different, uh, different tenants. They travel differently in a building, so we get much more detailed information from the traffic in the building. <coughs> okay, the same data was used to uh, formulate the average trip origin destination matrix estimation problems and to get a little bit more realistic data. We assume uh, a measuring accuracy of 90%. <coughs> So basically, each count, boarding or lighting count, was measured so that the error of making, uh, the, uh, the pro probability of making one, error of one passenger was 10%. That's what we did. Okay, so the 
estimated uh, elevated ship origin destination matrices are used to construct the estimated building origin destination matrix by adding up their estimation re results. And uh, the problem is, however, that the elevated ship origin destination matrix estimation problem may have many optimal solutions. And now, if you would select always the first solution found by the algorithm, then the building origin destination matrix would be biased towards the characteristics of the selected algorithm because you have different branching rules, heuristics, they affect the results. So you can actually get a better quality or a building origin destination matrix that better describes the possible realization of the passenger, passenger traffic by finding multiple optimal solutions and selecting the final solution, for example, randomly or uh, as the average of the computed solution. Okay, we used two criteria to study the performance of the algorithms and one of them was speed. Okay, we used this because the algorithm must be, in practice, it must be fast to reduce the CPU load in the real application. The quality was selected because the quality of the building or destination measure affects, the, for example, the forecasts that we are used, that we are making based on that. And uh, so what we did for each algorithm uh, in the experiment that we found, for example, one, no, this is what we did, for example, we found one, ten, one hundred, and one thousand, and all optimal solutions per problem instance, and then we selected the final solution as the, as the average for each instance, and uh, we constructed the estimate building origin the estimate method for each number of solutions separately by adding up the averages. Okay. Okay, some, some of the most important results. Uh, this graph shows the solving time of speed of the deterministic algorithm. Uh, you can read from the paper, I'm going to go into detail explaining the variable, but um, it shows that this uh, DM, which was uh, based on minimal domain and variable selection and minimal value selection, uh, is the fastest deterministic algorithm. And this uh, graph shows the uh, <coughs> deviation of the deterministic algorithm, so it, it uh, measures the quality. And the first uh, observation is that uh, if you increase the number of solutions that you compute for proper instance, you get better quality, res uh, quality results. And the uh, uh, second observation is that this uh, algorithm, uh, DM, uh, is results also in the almost the best quality. So we can kind of say that this, uh, if you use the deterministic algorithm in this case, then you should select this uh, algorithm DN. Um, okay, here uh, we have the number of solutions found by four selected algorithms as a function of solving time. I'm not, I'm not going to go into details, but it shows, uh, for example, that the, uh, the fastest deterministic algorithm can solve about 97.2 97.5% of the problem instances in this, uh, not, no, sorry, not solved, but found, find the first solution, one solution for each problem instance uh, in, uh, within uh, 0 0.2 seconds. It also shows that the completely randomized algorithm is too, it is too slow. It shows also that, uh, that if we only randomize the value selection, then we can uh, compute uh, about 100 solutions within a reasonable time. Okay, here uh, is the total square deviation, that's the quality of the fastest the randomized algorithm and the best deterministic algorithm. <coughs> and this graph just shows that independent of the number of solutions that we compute per problem instance, we get better quality results with the, uh, with the ran fastest randomized algorithm. So, uh, the main, main conclusion is that you should prefer this uh, fastest randomized algorithm over the best deterministic algorithm if you, uh, if you, have, if you can compute, uh, if you have a limited, limited time to compute the solutions, and for example you can compute at most 100 solutions, and you should, you should, you should select this uh, randomized algorithm. Okay. So what we did, we presented a new approach for the estimation of the passenger traffic in a building. Uh, I have wrote, written a paper also in Transportation Science. It, had, it presents another approach. 
a bit, a little bit different uh, assumptions. Yeah. So it's applicable in both conventional and destination control. Uh, and the main result was the randomization multiple optimal solutions, a good compromise between solid and quality. And the fastest algorithms can be implemented in real control. Real control. And from experience, uh, I can say that similar approaches are difficult to implement with, uh, for example, with uh, mixed in integer linear programming methods, uh, especially the randomization part is difficult. And, uh, well, future research is to compute actually the most likely original destination matrices based on what we have uh, seen in history. Thank you. <coughs> Questions, please. Right, uh, I'll ask a question. Oh, that's a big joke, thank you. At the risk of boring everyone. <laughs> um, I think there are three points I wanted to ask you. You showed inter entrance floor, uh, inter entrance track. Yeah. Do you ignore that or, or did you find that genuinely it did exist? Because we've usually assumed that that's illogical traffic. Uh, but I'm interested to see what you what what the re results uh, showed because maybe there is actually. Uh, we didn't, we didn't, uh, okay, we similar to building with one entrance floor, so it does not okay. exist sorry. in our case. But of course, you have many buildings with multiple, let's say, car parks uh, in basements. So then you might have uh, people coming from the car parks going to the main entrance floor, and so it 